Flow YouTube. Today, I have a quick video. Actually, this will be part one in a hopefully two part series on a scratch built Eldar Avatar of Cain. This model in particular I started on May. Ooh, early May. I think it was uh, May 7th or 8th. And it took me a while because I was not used to working with anywhere near this much green stuff. And at one point I even had to rip off one of the arms, half of the leg, and uh, go back at it. But what you see before you is the final completed avatar ready for ready for spray paint so I'll give you a quick idea of how I did this um, starting out I ooh, I began with uh, two globs of uh, green stuff that turned out to be one foot and I later had to rip off the other one because I was just not happy with it and actually that was that one I had to rip this one off and just go back and uh, do another one. This one, however, did turn out the way I wanted it to. It has the correct seamage, and if it's even a word, it and uh, as you can see, I was trying to do. I originally wanted to do a. Um, uh, the Eldar are very against. They're real, not real big fans of Slanesh. I wanted to have it like uh, crushing a Slanesh demon, and so I. I did this kind of snake, I don't know if you can see it very well, I did this kind of like snake pattern underneath there, if I can, good, but the head wasn't there, it was just the tail, and for the longest time that's all that was there was just this little tail piece. So then I moved up to the legs, uh, started out with um, two about equal length uh, rolls of uh, green stuff, and just mounted them there, uh, no supports, no, uh, um, no toothpicks, which was actually what I was used to working with was uh, toothpicks, but uh wanted to try. I, I'd read online that it was actually better just to let it uh, dry on its side and then put it in place once it was nearly dry. So I let it dry for about two hours, came back, got it a little wet, and then worked with it and got it into position. What I used to hold the joints together, this, this dark stuff, is actually JB Weld. Any of you who have seen my old Eldar avatar, uh, will be familiar with my use of JB Weld. I'm a big fan of that. Now for the detail, it's all green stuff, and then on up the leg, this whole body piece is actually two pieces of green stuff that have been melded together. I did the torso first, so you you can see like his ab armor. And this this avatar is actually a conglomeration of several different avatars that I saw online, and I kind of incorporated everything that I liked. I, I like the idea of El, uh, the avatar not having armor on, on his arms. I, I like that kind of being molten skin exposed there, so that's that's the case on this side. Um, I don't, I didn't like that little, like, webway-shaped thing that comes out of the pauldron, so got rid of that, and instead made his headdress bigger, so it's, it's kind of more impressive and more, you know, there it is. Also, uh, in the in the lore, I know some of you are probably looking at this axe going, why does the Eldar Avatar of Cain have an axe? As everyone knows, it is a spear or a sword. Well, actually, I did do my homework. The Avatar, it says, is either, either uses a sword, a spear, or a many-headed axe. And originally I was going for a three-headed axe. You can imagine how impressive that would have been. But it didn't work out. So you get two heads. Two heads better than one. So, Anyway, and then you've got this really nice, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I hope you can see that. There's a soul gem, and it's clutched between four uh, clawed fingers. Kind of like fingers on, on the edge, on the end of the axe. And the axe itself has runes uh, kind of bubbling out of the surface of it. And then, of course, it's got the crack like it's molten. You'll, you'll be able to see this a whole lot better when it's painted. Um, but all of it is green stuff, except for th this section here and this section here. That is Super Sculpey, and those pieces 
were actually originally the uh, the arm blades off of the old avatar, but I shaved them down. I thought it was kind of a nice carryover. Now the only thing that may change here in the final build, and I don't know that I'm going to change it because I'm I'm really happy with how it's turned out here with the you know the the, the flying uh, uh, the word escapes me, but the uh, the cloak uh, not my cloak it, whatever it is it's hanging out here in front of him. It looks really nice in the wind, and then it's got his runes, and that does have an iodine. Uh, rune on it, and then the avatar rune. But, um, yeah, really happy with that, and then he's got the avatar crest right here, but I thought it was a really nice carryover uh, to have these guys on here, and the only thing that what I would change would be to add a ball of flame inside his hand here uh, for the, uh, whatever that power is that allows the avatar a 12 inch strength 8 AP1 melta attack. It's, uh, 12 inch range, it's, it's, it's pretty lethal. Uh, with, uh, but you know, any of you who play Eldar know that that attack never hits because of our wonderful Eldar rolling skill. But anyway, this uh, the last thing I want to show you is this Lanesh Demon here. It has kind of a lamprey mouth on this end. This appendage is kind of a lamprey mouth. And then this one here, and I'm going for kind of a bird beak on there. And then on this one, it's actually a snake mouth. I don't know if you can see that very well. But there are fangs inside there. All right. Well, like I said, I'm, I'm really happy with how this uh, this guy turned out. And uh, I hope I can do the, uh, the model justice when it comes time to paint it. See you guys later.